Well good morning everyone and welcome once again to Eggs Orchids. Now here we're getting a real extreme of temperatures. Uh, four or five days ago it was 16 centigrade and today it's 28 centigrade. It's absolutely roasting in the greenhouse. Must be 32 or 3. I've had to switch the fans off for uh, doing this video so uh, I'll be as quick as I can. So I promise my next video will be about cat layers and uh, I've just counted them. I've got eight of them. And these are all the eight in front of you. Uh, I'm just starting again on cat layers and I'm going for the unifoliates, you know, the big blousy type of, uh, of cat layer, you know, with the beautiful fragrance. So I'll go through them and show you which ones I've got. Well, to start with, this is a wrinkled earlier cat layer, golf green, cross between. Uh, or what's it called, Cattleya Moscom and uh, and uh, Digbayana, that's what it is. And you know I love all my plants to be nice and tidy and I like the same with Cattleyas. You know usually Cattleyas can grow all over the place, over the edges of the pots and everything and I hate that. So uh, what I do, I fasten them up to make sure they grow upright and I'll show you that in a bit. The next one is uh, Mahina Yahiro Uliai. This is uh, one of my favourite cat layers. Absolutely beautiful. The sort of a pale uh, lavender colour with yellow. They're absolutely gorgeous and smell to perfection. This is looking a bit uh, like it's leaning over a bit, so I'll straighten all that up eventually. Mahino Yahiro Uliai. And for the third one we've got this King of Taiwan, Ta Sin. I think Ta Sin uh, is a recognised name for these, although they go under a number of names, which I think is through a misinterpretation of what they really should be. But these are beautiful as well. King of Taiwan. This is Cattleya Chungu Swan White Boulder, cross between Cattleya Wendora and uh, Cattleya Prisopolis. Bit of in a sorry state at the moment this one, looks like the tops of the leaves have been chewed, it was like that when I bought it. So I'm trying to grow it out and uh, once again the plant needs straightening up. This smaller one is Rincolelia Cattleya. Pink Empress, Pink Empress, Ju Shen, cross between Mount Hood and Bryce Canyon. It's only a small one, this, just with three pseudobulbs. Uh, I don't generally like them with less than four pseudobulbs on cat layers, but uh, this one came like this, so uh, I just have to uh, treat it right and hope it grows properly. Now this one was looking a bit uh, sorry for itself when I got it. This is Lelia Perini and uh, as I said before I nearly threw it away but now it's got this uh, new growth coming now and a few nice roots coming. So we'll keep an eye on that. If you notice I've got them in different pots. This is because I'm trying them out which is going to be the best. And the best up to now looks like it might be the uh, clay pots, which I don't generally like. But we'll see how it goes. You see these one were watered yesterday, so uh, you see the pot's still wet there. And yeah, that's uh, Lelia Perini. And this is just one I've just got off eBay. And it's uh, Cattleya Heisong Tian Mu. Quite a big plant, but uh, the condition doesn't look so bad. It just needs to settle into my conditions and I think it'll it'll take off well. Nice big strong leaves on it. So I was quite pleased with that when I got it. Once again it's in uh, a clear pot. One or two nubbins coming out there, as you can see. So that should be alright given time. I also think they take about four months to settle in properly, do cat layers, so uh, we'll see how that one goes. Well, you know that uh, cat layers, there are sort of two uh, types uh, and there are the uh, unifoliate and bifoliate. 
The unifolia one tends to be a much bigger plant, big showy flowers, uh, beautiful fragrance, but a little bit more difficult to keep than the bifolias, which have small flowers. Uh, again, they can be perfumed and uh, there are lots and lots of flowers. On the uh, unifolias you might get one or you might get two if you're lucky at one blooming. Well I'll just run through the requirements of the cat layers uh, as I see it and uh, I'd just be a quick thing but uh, don't take everything I say as gospel truth you know there's other ways of, uh, of doing things but uh, cat layers on the whole are uh, epiphytes uh, which grow on trees as you know and a few are lithotype uh, when they grow this way it always means they need the roots exposed into plenty of air. If you put them in a pot, put them in a coarse material, then you can get plenty of air around the roots. If it's too fine a uh, material for the roots, uh, then your water, it won't dry out quick enough and you'll eventually kill the roots. Most of them like sort of intermediate temperatures sort of 12 degrees at the lowest and they'll rise up to 35 for a short period of time uh, they like good to bright light and good air movement now watering for well grown plants uh, I would say water them and then let them get bore on, bone dry for a couple of days and then, uh, then water them again uh, for younger plants they need watering uh, more often. So uh, that's all I can say about them. Uh, cat layers uh, grow new leaves, uh, no, new leaves. Cat layers uh, nearly always get rid of the old uh, roots one year and grow new roots for the year after. I mean, this is like saying that the old growths are dying off and all the goodness are going to the new growths which uh, produce new roots. So they die off every year, the roots, and grow new roots every year. VLC uh, and Mahina Yahiro Uliai, and I'd just like to show you. Well, I'll keep the uh, I'll keep the plants in check and keep them looking neat. And the only thing I use is uh, this, which is uh, very very soft aluminium one millimeter wire. So we'll cut a length of that off. Like that. And then picking on the oldest suitable I twirl that round it now I've done this before in a video or oh, happened two or three years back but uh, for those who haven't seen it this is what we do it's a bit tricky to get started but once you get started it's fine the first one and then we take it round the next one in order so that one will come up a little bit a lot of people are thinking well doesn't don't the uh, aluminium cut into the uh, the suitables as they grow no because I don't wrap them that tightly and uh, with them being very very soft uh, wire it, uh, that helps as well. It expands a little bit with the uh, when they grow. Oh, I haven't cut this wire long enough, but you get the general idea. You just wrap them round like that.
if you're very quick, you can be here. Uh, you can do a few of these in no time. But uh, me, I'm getting a little bit fiddly. But that will come together like that. So that's how I do that. Now I've got a big surprise for me, which is in the Fragmapediums. Well, these are my two uh, Fragmapedium Kavaki eyes, growing very, very nicely. This is a new growth this year, absolutely beautiful, quite big too, and uh, I'm expecting that to flower next year. But the big surprise is my other Kavaki eye is in spike, as you can see here. So that's a very, very uh, nice surprise. I only saw it yesterday, so it must have grown very, very quickly. Anyhow, I'll keep an eye on that one and I'll show you in its different stages of development. So that's a really nice surprise for this week. Well, thank you very much for watching. That's about all for today. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with the next one, but a lot of things are happening, so I'll find something. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Thanks to my subscribers. Thanks to uh, everybody. Hope you all have a nice day, a good weekend, and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.